Hello and welcome to my tutorial series on how to model low-poly vegetables in Blender. This is the first part and we're going to be modeling a carrot today. So this is the model at the end. And I created this so you can follow along very easily. Let's start off by getting some reference. Just open the reference photo a bit. It's always good to get some reference down even when modeling a low poly model like this. And we get the general shape which is a cylinder. Get the faces down to 8 because we want that low poly look. Scale it up in the z-axis to match the carrot in our reference. And let's see, we don't need that many edges on top. So we're going to dissolve these faces and keep the poly count even lower. Let's scale the bottom faces down a bit. Just like that. And now we're going to extrude some areas to give uh, a convincing form. Extruding them out in the z-axis, then scaling them down to create this rounded shape right here. Now we're getting to the little stem part here and the leaves that are coming out of, of the top. Just repeat the steps we just, we just did. I'm going to subdivide this, these faces here and I'm going to extrude the faces individually to give us some geometry As you can see, you can move these faces individually. And to change things up a little, we're going to select some random faces over here and just scale them down, uh, grab them and scale them down or up. Just to get a little more convincing form here. All right, this looks fine. Let's get to the top and uh, to the bottom faces here. Extrude them out, scale them in, and repeat steps. Now we're going to prepare the mesh by evening out the space between the loop cuts. By getting into edit mode, pressing command R, and then with the wheel on your mouse you can uh, set the number of loop cuts here. We're going to use uh, displacement after, so it's always good to have some, some, some more loops here. All right. To add the displacement modifier, get into object mode, open modifiers, add modifier, get to displace Choose clouds as a texture and set the value really low because we just want a slight variation in the mesh. You can add an empty or a plain axis to set it as a displacement object and select it. So if you move any object that has this modifier, 
the mesh will automatically update and it's all random. It's time to add some seams to our model so we can UV unwrap it to get some text just done later. Now let's get into shading. First of all, we are going to create some simple materials to get the overall look of it. So we are going to create a orange material, as you can see. Just add it and pick a color. Okay, by switching to the edit mode, we can select uh, certain faces of our model and we can assign multiple materials to one mesh. Just click assign and pick the green color. Right, there's your carrot right there. Let's see how it looks rendered. Let me add a sunline, a sunlight to see what our carrot looks like so far. So I want to add some details to our model without increasing the vertice count. So you can see these uh, hard edges and I want to get rid of them without beveling them in edit mode. So I will just add a bevel node to the material. It's a little bit smoother now and I like the look of it. I want to get some gradient color change on this model. So we are going to introduce a texture coordinate node and a mapping node. And we want uh, generated coordinates because we just want to change the color in the Z axis. Just, uh, just plug it in. And we have to separate the X, Y and Z. So let us get this node in here, plug that in, and now we can use the z-axis. Now we need a color ramp, and we can plug the z-value into the factor, and then the color into the base color. And as you can see, we have a nice gradient here from black to white, and we can adjust this right here. Here I will go into, I'm going to get a little bit of a darker orange. And here, a lighter. It's pretty easy and it's looking great, I think. I just copied the notes from the orange material by clicking Command and C. By clicking Command and V, I'm going to paste it into the green material, connect it to the base color. Now I have to change the colors manually to my liking. Okay. 
and I can control the spacing or the distribution of the gradient by tweaking these handles here. So I'm getting right to the back here. All right. I really like this, but I want to add a little more detail. So we're going to create a new texture here. And we want to draw right on the model. So I'm going to get the shading, but first let's save our new texture. I'm going to add an image texture here and plug this into the base color so I can see what I'm doing. We're using this for a normal manipulation later. So black and white is all we need. As you can see, we can draw right on the model. It's a bit more interesting than just a flat shader. We are aiming at a cartoonish low poly look here, so I think this is fine. Let's save our texture. Now let's get back into shading. And we can use this in multiple ways now. Get our original colors back. All right. So now we need uh, another, I think, a copy of the texture coordinates and the mapping. But because we're we we drew on the UV, we're going to plug in the UVs right here. Get our image texture. Plug this in, and now we're going to use this as a normal. So we're going to put a bump map right here in between the bevel and the shader, so we don't lose the beveled look. We can plug this into the height, and as you can see, we have some bumps on our mesh now. But we want to, we want these uh, these details actually to go inwards. So get an invert node, put it in between. Now you can see we have this nice detail here. All right, I want to use this detail uh, on the color too, so I'm going to put a mix RBG, uh, RGB shader here and just get this and connect these two shaders. For now it's just uh, a gray color and we want some kind of a light orange one. So get our RGB color curve in here. Now we can tweak the color that we want. So right now our model of a carrot, a low poly carrot, is finished. 
And if you're trying this, um, try to duplicate the carrot and change the mesh, like scaling it up, uh, shrink it down, cut off some parts or something like that. I would love to see your take on this. So if you're creating a carrot after this tutorial, you can show me by tagging me on Twitter or show me your work on Instagram. I hope you liked the tutorial and had fun creating this low poly carrot. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification button to keep yourself updated on new videos and tutorials. Thanks for watching and have fun creating!